So now you've come into your seated position, we're going to come into a couple of poses here. And this very first one that we're going to come into is a forward bend. Now, one of the important things with a forward bend is that you've got to allow your, your pelvis to tilt forwards. So if you find that when you're sitting, you're kind of like curved in your spine, what you're going to need to do is sit on a cushion. You can even, if I just do this with my mat, you can even fold your mat up just a little bit. It's just to, to lift the pelvis a little bit. And excuse me from saying this, but you kind of like have to get hold of the flesh and get it out of the way as well. I do apologize for that, but that's the way it is. So once you've got yourself in a position where you can feel the pelvis tilted forward, then you know you're okay. So I'm gonna begin with my left leg. Now for my left leg, I've actually got arthritis in this left knee. So I have to, when I'm doing this side, I do have to use Block. So I'm going to use a block again, you can use a cushion. So you're going to bring this left foot to the inside of the right thigh and just allow it to be supported in a position that's right for you. It might not go that high, it might be further down. So you must make sure that it feels right for you. Again, you want to make sure that you keep this long spine. Now, a lot of the time you might have seen photographs of people who are doing yoga that fold beautifully and their, their forehead just gracefully goes down to their ankle. Well, that's not most people, I'll be completely honest with you. So what you need to do is make sure that you come into what's right with you. So keep that length in the spine. So you're keeping the shoulders away from the ears. Take a deep breath in, close your eyes, forget about what anybody else can do and just let the fingertips start to walk forward. So you're coming into a half forward fold and a Again, of course, you can use the strap there if you wish. It just allows you to remember to keep the spine lengthened so the shoulders are dropping away from the ears. And as you get a little bit more flexible, the fingertips might go a little bit further forward. So just allow yourself to take a few breaths with that. And then when you're ready, you come back to the center. I always prefer just to have a little bit of a mini backward bend so you can squeeze the shoulder blades away there. I'm going to do a slightly more dynamic counter pose on the other side so you can see there's different ways of doing this. So again, I'm going to straighten out both legs. I'm going to come on towards the other side. So this is my better knee. So right foot's going to come towards the inside. Again, I'm still going to support it though. And again, just allowing that to stretch out there. Fingertips out of the side of the leg. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale again, you're just going to walk the fingertips so the chin is level with the floor. Now, I'm, I was about to say something that's going to show my age. Those of you who remember the yellow pages with the fingertips that walk, that's what you're going to be doing. Those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> walk the fingertips forwards. Shoulders away from the ears, taking that into a few and gentle deep breaths. And then when you're ready, you're gonna come back to the center. Now I did say I was gonna show you a, a different way to counter pose. Now this is a more dynamic counter pose. So you would only do this if you're quite strong and you were used to doing exercise, you would roll onto that right knee, onto this left foot, and you would just lift and extend the left arm over the head. So that is a much more dynamic counter pose, but you wouldn't hold that long. You come back to the center, Release the legs and give the legs a little bit of a shake there. Now I'm going to come into a half spinal twist. So I'm going to get rid of my mat now. I don't need it to be folded over because I'm not coming into a forward bend anymore. So again, kind of like shuffle yourself forwards so you are sitting on the bones there. You can feel that. So I want you to begin to just start to slide this left foot in. Now it's really important to make sure that you keep this length in the spine and you are going to use the arm to help you do this. Now you've got different options here. Right hand can come to the outside of the left knee, fingertips behind, breathe in to lift and exhale to twist. This straight leg, keep the toes pointing towards the ceiling, close the eyes down. So you can come here, but you might be able to take it a little bit deeper. So you can cross the leg over if that feels okay. And you could even hug the knee in towards you. Remember you're using this backhand to allow you to lift, but shoulders still rolling away from the ears. Now, some of you might even be able to take that arm a little bit further. So do what is right for you. I'm gonna stay with this one. Relaxing the shoulders, deep breaths, again with the body. Twists are really good for the digestive system. And I know from having had chemotherapy that the digestive system gets affected quite a lot. 
Now gently as you exhale, just twist in the opposite direction and then ease yourself back to the center, ready for the other side. So again, shaking the legs, make sure you're sitting upright, right leg's gonna come in. Again, easier option, excuse the back of my head. Left hand to the outside of the right knee, hand behind, breathe in to lift and exhale to twist. Shoulders come away from the ears. So of course you can stay here, remember. Can you take it further? Only if it feels right. Extended leg, toes pointing up. Again, that elbow might be able to pull. So as you draw that thigh towards you, you're gonna breathe in and exhale, you're gonna to begin to twist. Again, the shoulders are relaxing away from the ears. Now this back hand, maybe it needs to be on knuckles, maybe the palm reaches the floor, mine doesn't. So I tend to prefer to be on fingertips. As long as you're allowing your spine to lift, that is fine. And as you breathe into the belly, you're gonna feel your belly being massaged by the thigh, which is why it's so good for your digestive system. And again, as you breathe in and exhale, you're gonna to begin to twist just in the opposite direction. And you're gonna release that, give the legs a bit of a shake again. Now we're gonna finish with a pose called tortoise. And this is possibly one of my favorite poses. One of the things I've discovered uh, from being diagnosed with myself was that I kind of like wanted to curl up into a ball sometimes just to get away from the world. And tortoise pose allows us to do this. Now you're gonna to begin to bring the soles of your feet towards each other. Again, you wanna make sure the pelvis is tilting forwards. Now there's different variations of this. If you're not very flexible, you're probably just gonna to wanna to bring your hands to the shins, relax the shoulders away from the ears. And that might be it for you. So don't worry if you can't go any further. So I'm gonna show you two more options for this. So if you take a deep breath in, just gonna make sure that I've got my block to hand. Sorry, <laughs> take a deep breath in. And you can take this a little bit deeper. So you might wanna hold on to the feet or maybe even interlace the fingers and you can let the head just begin to relax. Now, as you're doing this, you'll start to feel the breath is being constricted in the belly. So you will have to breathe more into the back. Now there's another version of this, which is the one I actually prefer. You bring the right arm underneath the right leg and you bring the left arm underneath the left leg. And then the backs of the hands can just rest either side of the feet and then the head can just relax. Now you can, if you wish, <clears throat> put a block underneath the forehead here just to rest it because the head can be quite heavy. It can weigh as much as a stone. So from here, as you just let everything begin to relax, you can see why it's called tortoise pose now because you effectively have created yourself a nice little shell. And as you breathe, you will feel yourself starting to breathe into the back of the lungs. And then when you're ready, you're slowly and carefully gonna lift the head, raise from the chest, you're probably going to want to use the hands to bring the knees back together. Bring the hands behind you, walk the feet so they're about hips width apart. I always finish with a thing called windscreen washes after I've done that one. So all you're going to do is windscreen wash your feet from side to side. Because that's what you need to do. So they're just a few little pretty, pretty, uh, not simple because there are different variations of that, but just a few little exercises that you can do on the floor. But when you've done them, one of the most important things you've got to do is lie down in what we call Shavasana. You can put a bolster underneath your uh, knee. You can bring the soles of the feet onto the floor so the knees come together. You can put your hands on your belly. You can put your hands either side. You can put a cushion under your head. But I really do think it's extremely important to come into this pose at the end. And this is known as Shavasana. And this is effectively your relaxation pose. But if it hurts the back, you bend the knees.